Hey everyone, welcome back. Welcome back to my home and thanks for coming over for a visit on this Sunday evening. So first of all, as you can see from the pictures in the beginning of this video, we have my husband home. So it was five days in the hospital. My son Gavin was beyond thrilled to have him home. Needless to say, I am too. He's home, hopefully safe and sound. And the end results were um, he had two blood clots in his lungs and one blood clot in his leg. They believe the clots in his lungs have either dissipated, at least one of them looked like it definitely did, the other one hopefully in the next little while, um, and the leg is still being worked on. We go for a test in about a week for a CT scan on his chest, and then he follows up a week later with a doctor, and then I think a week later with another doctor. So. It'll be a process. I don't have all the answers. I don't have the final results of all this, but for now they felt he was well enough. So basically what they did is after we had the first scan at an imaging center, they took him, they said, go right to the ER. Um, he went into the ER, they ran a gamut of tests. They were extremely efficient. My husband said it was boom, boom, boom in one test, the next test, I think it's heparin is the name of the uh, medication he was on, that it's getting into his system, he's reacting well, and so on. And uh, if you don't know, if you're fairly new to my channel, my husband is also an epileptic, so they had to monitor that along with everything going on. He was pretty much pinned in one position, arm laid out with two IVs on this arm. This arm was blood work. He could not move from that position. He needed to stay completely still and stable. So it made it a little difficult for pretty much doing anything. They switched him off of all the um, injections and IVs and things like that to a pill form. And then they needed to monitor that because that is what now he has come home with. So um, they had to check physical therapy to make sure the muscle tones in his legs from not only not walking for a week, but because of being an epileptic, um, you know, that he was stable on his feet. His greatest joy, other than coming home, was being able to just get up and walk and feel like he could go walk into our shower and have a hot shower and walk to the kitchen and make a cup of coffee and just get back into routine. So he came home Friday evening. It was about seven hours from the time they said he's ready to be discharged to the time he actually was discharged. So it it was a long process. Gavin and I sat in our van in a parking lot out near Panera Bread and we sat and we watched YouTube and we took notes and we, do we talked and we called our oldest son who um, works maybe half a mile from there and he drove up in his car and we chatted for a while and we had a parking lot picnic, I guess you'd say, for about seven hours until we were finally able to pick him up. Then we had to go over to the pharmacy and uh, I'll throw a picture in here right now so you get to see what I look like. Okay, so you see me holding the RX. It took an hour and a half of me fighting with the pharmacy to get my husband's medication. Now, I can't blame the pharmacy. Actually, the girl at the pharmacy, her name is Jess, and I am actually picking up a gift card this week to go give her. She doesn't know this. The girl went out of her way to help us. Here's the deal. So I wanted to just pass on some RX, hopefully RX information. So let me show you my pile here. So we get this, you know, the hospital discharge paperwork, go see this doctor and all that. Then they give us this whole pamphlet, like it's like an encyclopedia here of information on the blood thinner. But then we had to go get all the RX, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, I think six scripts. And the first couple, they called in and they were waiting for us at the pharmacy. No problem, get checked, that's done. Then my husband's main one, which is the blood thinner, I hand them the script and the hospital was supposed to give us a 30 day free supply. We're not quite sure what happened big mix up that was part of the seven hours of waiting so the doctor said here's the script just go to your pharmacy you're all set we are not ones to take medication I mean my husband has a seizure medicine but 
That's what we've been doing for years and years. We got that down pat. We don't go on antibiotics. We don't take other meds. We're not at the pharmacy. So some of this might be like old hat for you guys. This was all new for me. But I went in with the script and the first thing I said was, I heard that it's gonna be a hefty charge. Can you give me an idea of what we're looking at? So she went to look it up and she said, with the insurance and everything else, it's about $450. Okay, well, you know, hefty it is. And then she came and she said about 15 minutes. And I said, okay, well, let me get my husband home. He just came home from the hospital and we'll get the script written. Okay, no problem. So she comes back and she said, we can't fill your prescription because of the way, I believe now looking back hindsight, I think she said it was the way the script was written and needed to be this, what they call a starter kit. We went round and round. We called other pharmacies. We called, you know, other brand pharmacies and they went out of their way. We went and I fought for my husband and I told my husband, I claimed those of you that uh, know scripture, I claimed Exodus 14, 14. And I just cl kept claiming that verse as I sat there and I sat there. Good RX, if you don't have that app on your phone, you might wanna get that because you can plug in your medication, get a discount. They looked at that, they looked at other discounts. They were able to basically cut the script in half. It cost $606 out of pocket for 30 day supply. And at this point, we have to eat it, we have to do it and we got this but that is with coupons and what the pharmacy was able to do is pull it up on their computer and find all these different coupons that you can get that are being offered that i didn't even know about and if i hadn't asked i don't know they would have told me so just a couple of tips is ask is it the way the script is written can i have it rewritten do they offer coupons how much would it be out of pocket it was not much more from the insurance to the out of pocket with the coupons, it was well worth it because I was able to walk home with that script in my hand and have that medication for my husband. So I just wanted to throw that out there. If you're struggling with getting medication, again, many of you might have dealt with this. This was new to me, but I learned and every lesson learned, you move forward. Next time I go, I'll be that much more educated. The last thing, guys, I wanna tell you, I am so blessed to tell you this. You know I'm a big advocate of having a pantry stockpile provisions for your home. We went through, if you didn't catch it, I will leave a card up above and also in the description of starting a stockpile on $5, just $5, building up a pantry stockpile. If you have one, great. If you don't have one, you need to do it. We talked about this weeks ago of why to have one. You get snowed in, you get laid off of work, the car breaks down, things happen. Well, here was a afternoon, a Monday afternoon, and my husband and I were doing our thing. And next thing I know, I'm rushing him to the ER to spend five days in the hospital. Did I plan this? Absolutely not. Did I know this was going to happen? No. But this was the week I needed to buy food. This would have been my normal week to start picking up provisions. If it wasn't for my pantry and stockpile, I probably would have had a little bit of a panicky moment. But let me tell you, one of the best things that you can have is canned chicken. If you like chicken, this certain canned meats, I think are kind of, I wouldn't say the level of dog food, but you know, if we're gonna be honest with each other, kind of smell, look, and yeah. This one, this particular brand you can get at Walmart is excellent. It is chunky white chicken meat. Let me tell you, stuff like this, now is it fresh, you know, frozen out of the freezer? No, we're talking, I have had an emergency and I need to survive, and I would recommend always having two weeks. Now my husband was in the hospital for one week, so you got one week, you're rushing around, you're not thinking straight, you're, you're dealing with having your kids or your family or yourself and taking care of your spouse, whatever it might be. And then the next week is basically for us will be, I have to go back to work, I have to regroup and reorganize. But a can of chicken like this, I made us chicken soup the other day that was absolutely delicious. You can make 
chicken salad. You can do chicken and gravy over toast. You can do chicken and a white sauce and peas. You can do chicken enchiladas. You can do chicken, chicken, chicken. Use this and some canned vegetables. I have shelf-stable milk in my pantry stockpile. I have pastas, I have rices, I have all kinds of stuff. If I can't stress it more to you now, I had a week unexpected that I didn't know was going to happen. Now, with that being said, I was absolutely blessed. We have a, what do they call it? A food train, a meal, meal train, meal train. I guess that's what they call it. Coming to us over the next two weeks, every other night, we have people from my son and daughter-in-law's church bringing us meals tonight. Actually, I have baked ziti and some salad and garlic bread waiting for me Ooh, in the other room as soon as we're done with this video. But that has been set up. People were blessing us with gift cards for Grubhub and DoorDash that we could order food in. We are blessed, but there are a lot of you that might not have those resources. And let me tell you, get your pantry. Put it together. Don't tell me you can't afford it. A dollar a week. Try and do $5 a week. But if you can't do a dollar a week, at the end of the month, you'll have four items in your stockpile. This canned chicken, add a vegetable to it, make a white sauce. You can stretch it if you have to. You can make the sauce thin. You could do what you need to do. Add some beans to it and bulk it up. You need to have food on hand in case of an emergency. We'll be doing another video up and coming about eating your stockpile, how to eat through it, what to do, how to make sure there's always enough food, but you have to have a stockpile. Minimum of two weeks. Best would be two months, minimum of two weeks. The up and coming videos. But if I can honestly recommend to you, you don't know when an emergency will happen and you will need to depend on what is in your stockpile versus what is in your refrigerator. I was out of milk, but I have shelf stable milk. I was almost out of bread, but I have flour. I can make bread. I don't have time to go and get frozen chicken out of the freezer and cook it, but I can get a can of chicken and I can whip up an easy dinner within 10 minutes. I just want to thank you so much for all your prayers, all your love, and all your support. I've got many emails. I even got a few cards in the mail and just message after message. Thank you. Thank you so much on behalf of the entire Wilson family for lifting us up in prayer. Please continue to pray. Graham has a few more tests to go through. And we just want to kind of get beyond this. And for those of you that are asking how he got blood clots, he is not a smoker. We're not smokers. We're not drinkers. We don't take drugs or anything like that, nor has he in the past. So he was free and clear of the normal reasons why you would get blood clots. The virus, I won't even mention the full name of it, that has been going around during the pandemic. We all had back over Thanksgiving and these blood clots are related to that virus. So if you sus suspect anything in yourself that could maybe lead to a blood clot, if you're having any discomfort, I would highly recommend, please check it out. Don't waste any time. My husband has checked it out. We caught it in time. Thank you again. We'll catch you on the next video.